Hi, readers. Welcome to Books Connect Us from Penguin Random House. This is a podcast about staying connected with each other and the stories and authors who inspire us. Our guest today is Taylor Jenkins Reid, author of the acclaimed novel Daisy Jones and the Six. Taylor talks to her good friend Natasha Minoso, a social media manager at Penguin Random House, about working and parenting while stuck indoors, what she's reading right now, and how Nora Ephron is getting her through these tough times. Here's our chat with Taylor Jenkins Reid. Hello, welcome to the PRH podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh my God, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a weird time. Um, Yes, it is. But we're both working from home. How is it going for you? Um, You know, working from home is not hugely different for me because I, as a writer, I I work from home anyway. And so does my husband because he's a writer. Um, And so that part hasn't really changed. What's changed is that my toddler is home all day. Um... And we have no childcare or grandparents coming. And so uh, it. I went from having eight hours a day of time to work to zero <laughs> hours a day. Oh my God. Um, I, I literally said to my husband, you know, five minutes ago, I was like, you know, try to go play outside so that it's quiet in here so that I can, you know, focus and do this podcast. It's it's just, you know, hour by hour, we're figuring it out. No, that totally makes sense. There's so much more on your plate now. You have to, like, have entertainment for her and you need to, like, have, a like, a different kind of to-do list, which is totally. so interesting. And you just have to make sure that, like, one eye is on her at all times. She's three and a half and, you know, sometimes she'll get a wild hair up her butt to start climbing – you know, on top of the dresser or something. And if, you, if you're if you not there uh, watching it all unfold, it, you know, she, she keeps she keeps you on my toes. I'll say that. <laughs> That's awesome, though. But I can understand how, like, stressful that would be, too. Yeah, it's stressful. But also, I, I will say I have noticed that uh, I have less time right now to be reading the news and worried about tomorrow because I'm trying to keep her engaged and happy and make sure she's being stimulated and learning things. And so I think it's a, uh, it's, it's, you know, every person's situation is different in this weird world that we're in, but I am thankful Mm -hmm. that I have somebody else I have to take care of at the moment because it's keeping me from reading the New York times too much. Oh, that's totally, that makes so much sense. I have gone through like endless scrolling and I'm like, this is not helping me in the slightest. I need to be off of social media. But then you can't stop, right? It's like, I'll be on Twitter and I'm scrolling through Twitter and I'll be like, this is making me depressed. This is making me sad. There's nothing I can do. It's only hurting me. And I like, can't stop. Right. No, it's, I've gone from like switching from my phone to my my computer. And for some reason, I think that the information is going to change. I'm like, you know what? I'll just open Twitter <laughs> on my desktop and things will be different. And it's not. No. <laughs> but nope. yeah, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to do now. But every it's day, yeah, time. every day we're taking it like day by day. I have been, yeah. uh, I'm just like, this is day 14. What do I do now? But yeah, the same as you did day 13 <laughs> and oh, the same 100%. as you do day 15. So that's what's <laughs> part of what's so crazy about it is I wake up every morning and I'm like, all right, what's today? And it's like, it's, it's the exact same as it was yesterday. It is such a weird wake up call. Like, I'm just like, you know, this is a, we're just going in circles now and that's okay. But am I going to wear the exact same thing I wore yesterday? Yes. Yes. And that's fine too. <laughs> yes. At this point, I'm doing laundry, and it's of, like, the same three outfits where I'm like, cool, I'll wear that sweatshirt and those sweatpants, and then I'll wear this sweatshirt and these sweatpants, <laughs> and then it's like, I just do that same that same laundry over and over, because what's the point? No, I get that. I, I was packing, since I came from New York, I'm now in Miami, and I was packing as if I was going out in Miami. So I have way too many dresses and jeans. Jeans. That was a oh, yeah. bold move to pack no. jeans. You can just leave those jeans in the suitcase. Yeah. In what world am I going to slip on a pair of jeans? If I slip on a pair of jeans, I need my mom to call someone because something's wrong. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. I'm losing it if I'm putting on jeans. You don't need any kind of fixed length 
waistband right now. No. You know, you need full elastic happening. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel that entirely. So how do you, I guess, like now figuring out your time management with like having to obviously care for another human being and writing, how do you keep writing? Like, how do you find inspiration to keep writing, especially now? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I, I feel like I have two answers and, and they sort of contradict each other, but somehow they're both true. And one of them is that I'm just not writing. Like, okay, you know, I, I just don't know what I can do. You can't squeeze blood from a stone is kind of how I'm feeling at the moment, Mm -hmm. which, which is to say like, you know, there's only so many hours in a day and my kid is only asleep for 12 of them. And I need to sleep for some of those too. (laughs) Um, so in some ways I feel like my, uh, workload or, or my productivity, I should say has just plummeted and I'm working on being okay with that. On the other hand, and this is what I mean by saying that it's I'm sort of contradicting myself, I do have things that have to get done. I have copy edits on my new book that came in that I need to get um, approved and and I need you know to go through that document with a fine tooth comb and really make sure that we get all the typos out and, and all the inconsistencies and make it perfect so that it's ready um, to come out next year. Uh, and that has to get done. So I have to find time to do it. And so I find that I am doing that while putting in headphones and listening to white noise while my kid is watching PBS. <laughs> and so it's like <laughs> she's she's watching Sid the Science Kid for an hour and I'm listening to like Pacific Ocean sounds in my earphones right next to her, uh, you know, editing a document as best I can. Um, right. You just have to find the moments when you can find them. But... Uh, but also just be okay with the fact that the amount you're going to get done is, is just painfully, painfully small compared to what you, what I, you know, compared to what I was used to even two weeks ago. Right. Yeah. I feel like that makes sense. A lot of the tweets that I've been seeing from different authors has just kind of been being okay with not writing one day, being okay with writing two sentences and just not trying to think of this time as like, a writing retreat and more so of a, if I have inspiration, I have it. But if I don't, that should be okay too, because there's so much anxiety and there's so much to be thinking about. And yeah, having to split your time between, you know, staying on top of the news and staying on top of your own writing is just so, I can't imagine how difficult it is. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, I don't, everyone's job is different and writing is a particular thing in which you're sort of self-motivated and and um your deadlines are a lot of times like you're answering to yourself you are your own boss um but I see so many of my friends who have jobs where they're working from home for the first time and it's interesting because I feel like I get it like the world has to go on but also the world sort of can't go on (laughs) at the same pace um And I feel like everyone should just give themselves a break. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely been strange working from home and just even having our own deadlines, like on the work that I'm normally doing with social media. It's a weird thing, like looking at deadlines and thinking, what is this feels like funny to have deadlines and to feel so like everything is still, you know, everything is still moving. Things still have to like go up and things still have to happen. But it seems so like strange. It's a weird feeling. It's a weird feeling posting on Instagram and, you know, when everything else is happening. But yeah, it's great that we're talking about books. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Is like on the one hand, books are a wonderful way to escape your current reality. And there's something that you can do alone at home. Um, There's something you can buy um, with, with relative ease without leaving the house. Right. Um, local bookstores are, are shipping and you can get ebooks from a variety of different places. All that's great. But at the same time, like as an author, when I think about my Instagram page, it, it's like, what? I'm going to I'm going to post about books right now. Like, right. It just feels like there's no good answer. And so like sometimes sometimes I'm like, OK, here's a book or like here's a giveaway or, you know, and then other times yeah. I'm like. Like, no, like there's nothing to say except for 
just wanting everyone to be okay. Um, yeah. I, I have no experience to compare this experience to um, as, as no one does. And so I feel yeah. like we're all just like making up these rules as we go. For and sure. I don't know it, what those rules should be. And I don't think any of us do. Yeah, I think a lot of it is just trial and error, and especially on social media, just because everyone yeah. is so online. Like, I have never <laughs> experienced a time where yeah. everyone is looking at what you're posting, or yeah. everyone is just, for some reason, on Instagram Live, and it is just such a strange thing. It feels like everyone's in my house, but mm-hmm. they're not, but they yeah. are, because I feel like yeah. I've always been online, this is my job, and so now I'm like, wow, everyone is here, like, what's... What do I need to, what should I be posting now? What am I, Yeah. what are we talking about? We're but, somehow like more connected digitally than we've ever been and less connected physically than we've ever been. And seeing once the thing's all over, how is that, are things going to go back to the way that they were? Right. What's the, the new way that it will be? How have we changed as a result of this? You know, I hope that it doesn't, come to pass that we've we learn now that we don't have to see each other physically and so even when this is over we stop doing that that would be sad right yeah no I think the transition into real life again hopefully will be an easy one but I think it will be a little strange it'll be interesting to see like people going from online to offline and how that maybe people will be posting even more because they're talking about everything that they're doing in their real lives but yeah I don't know it's, it's strange, but at least I think in some ways the conversation on about books has been just so overwhelmingly positive and just yes. there's so many communities online, whether it's Facebook groups or Bookstagram or your Twitter feed. I think everyone's right now talking about this is the book that I'm reading and it has made me forget that I am sitting in my room alone, but yes. it's just been a really fun way of saying you can still enjoy books and talk about them with other people and with strangers or with your friends online and still have that kind of like book club feel, which is ideal. And, and also like, you know, places like Los Angeles, the joke is always that it's difficult to get anybody to come out for an event anyway, because, you Mm -hmm. know, traffic's bad and the city's huge and whatever. And so my book club, for instance, just moved to zoom. So now, you know, it's just a book club on Zoom. Um, Love that. Yeah. And and that's the kind of stuff that I think I'm so glad that that's happening. And I hope that that continues because I think more yeah. people will participate in book clubs if they don't have to get, you know, if they don't have to put on their jeans. With, oh, for with, sure. <laughs> with if I'm having to put on a bra to go somewhere, yeah. I'm like, you know, the chances low. They're low. Yeah. But here I can't even, I can't even lie about being busy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I, I think talking about books and talking about stories, whatever mm-hmm. medium they come in, is something that is such a connective force. Um, yeah. And I'm really glad to see that people are turning to that. People are reading. People are talking about what they're reading. People are doing uh, virtual book chats. Um, bookstores are doing that. I think it's awesome. And I hope all that stuff continues. Yeah. I think it's great because it's also showing people who are maybe not readers how important social media is for books mm-hmm. and just like how great it is to be able to put these books in front of, you know, maybe non-readers faces and also showing authors how important their social media presence is. Cause like this is yeah. the time, this is the time where you're going to, you know, have that direct contact with your readers that maybe you weren't putting as much effort or time into. And it's just like, this is, the perfect kind of excuse for you to really like connect with your readers and the people who like are obsessed with their stories and want to, you know, read your next manuscript immediately. And it's just been really fun seeing a lot of authors go live and talk about their writing process because it's, they maybe just didn't have that time before. And now they're like, well, why wouldn't I? Why not? Like, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. And also like social media is something that I think there's a sense, certainly as an author, that it's something that you need to be good at. Um, that it's something that, uh, has like a certain style or an expectation of visual quality or, you know, whatever. 
Um, and now it's just sort of a free for all of like, put it out there, maybe it'll entertain somebody, make somebody feel less alone. And so the bar of entry, I think is lower. So you have authors who are like, you know what, like, I'm just gonna do this, because it's like a little bit less scary to just put it all out there at this time, because we're kind of all in this thing together. And it's much right. less um, about like, oh, like whose picture is the prettiest. Um, For sure. Which, which is, which is great. Yeah, I think it's 100% less about the production now. Yes. And I think that should be kind of the way that it, I, ideally, I think it, ho- I hope that it continues to be that way. Because it is very just like, this is in the moment. This is something that I'm going to just put up because it's something that I'm experiencing right now. And why would I wait until tomorrow? Like tomorrow's the same exact day as today. I'm just going to, you know, go on Instagram live today and talk about whatever books I'm reading today. But it is, it is really interesting just seeing the amount of people that I have followed and didn't maybe see their content because they weren't posting as much. And now I see it all the time. And I'm like, wow, these are a lot of people and authors that I didn't, you know, even think that they had a social presence and now they're here and it's fun. It's fun having this conversation with people that maybe you haven't talked to already. Yeah. And who knows, like more authors doing stuff. One thing that could be really great out of all of this is that it could be an opportunity for people that haven't um, fallen in love with reading to fall in love with reading because, Oh, definitely. You know, I remember Like, I think a lot of people think, like, book people have been, like, bookish their whole lives. But I don't think that's true. Like, for me, I wasn't a reader as a kid. And it wasn't until I got to college. And it was actually, like, a Thanksgiving weekend, I think, where I was, like, bored. And so I, like, asked my roommate. I was like, what book should I read? Like, on the train. Like, as, like, and that seemed like a novel thing to do. Uh, No pun intended. (laughs) I was like, I was like, that's kind of a funny thing. What if I read a whole book um and she she gave me the world according to garp and i devoured it and i just fell in love with like losing myself in this other world in this slower pace than than a movie or a tv show um that was more rewarding in many ways and this feels like a perfect opportunity for somebody like I was back then maybe you didn't read as a kid maybe as a teenager you weren't into it but you this is your moment where you get bored enough that you pick up a book laying around the house and you fall in love with reading so maybe we'll get a lot of new readers after that after this I yeah that's 100% my goal (laughs) as a book marketer I am here for that transition Um, but I guess my biggest question for you is being in this time, what kind of books are you reading or are you able to read? Because I think for me, I want to read everything that was on my to-be-read shelf because I'm like, look at all this time. Like, why wouldn't I fill it with books? But yeah. I think it's hard to s- yes. still, like, sit and be able to escape. And I think the only thing that I found I could read is romance, mm-hmm. and which is 100% mm-hmm. not a bad thing. I will always read a romance. Oh, yeah. But I think that it is the only thing that's keeping me completely engaged. I think yeah. anything else that maybe has a little bit that a heavier plot, I think it's just too much. I'm like, listen, I have a lot of stress. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know that I want fictional stress. So yes, I think I've just I've dived into a lot more romance. And it, I was I guess I'm curious about like what that the reading process for you is now. Yeah, that's a really good question. First of all, I think romance is like the number one thing that we should all be reading right now because it's, you know, it's comforting in a lot of ways. There's, uh, when you're reading a romance novel, you have some understanding of the way the story is going to go and what it will deliver for you. And I think that's really important. Um, and who doesn't want to focus on love and positivity and tenderness between people during this time? Um, I have gone a different route, which, but, but sort of based on the same issue I think you're having, it's really hard to focus uh, right now. And yeah. so, um, and reading does take focus and it takes more focus to read a book than it takes to watch a TV show or listen to a song or something like that. It, it does. It's um, it's like a, a higher buy in and then a higher reward, I think. Um, yeah. But what I've been doing is rereading. I've been going Ooh. through things that I've loved um, and just 
reading them again. The the yeah. biggest one for me is, you know, I really have always loved Nora Ephron. And um, I have been going through and rereading some of her essays and lists that she would do and just finding a lot of comfort in it. And she's so funny, too. Like, everything Nora Ephron said was funny. But it's just nice to laugh and to laugh in this context of like, I don't need to super pay attention because I already know what this is about. I already know what's happening. Um, yeah. Her her novel Heartburn, uh, you know, I mean, it was written in a very specific period of time, so it's not up to date on any of the things that are so important to us now um, right. about, you know, identity politics. But it, it was written in the 70s, and it's a very funny novel. And... The audiobook of it um, is available, I think, only on Audible, this version, um, read by Meryl Streep. And oh, so amazing. I just like, that's a book that I just like turn on sometimes and just listen to Meryl Streep perform it. Um, and it's so comforting to me. But yeah. Libro FM is also where I get most of my audiobooks. Um, and when you buy through Libro FM, you're supporting a local a local independent bookstore, which is great. And uh, audiobooks are just really comforting to me right now, even when it's just like I need to fall asleep and I'm mm-hmm. stressed out and I'm like thinking about, you know, the pandemic. I'll just turn on an audiobook that I've already read um, and just listen to somebody read me a story. And it's very comforting. Yeah, I love that. I think I was, uh, I had just gotten back home so I'm in my parents' house and I have a ton of the books that I've read when I was a teenager. They're all just sitting on my shelves. And I was like, this is the perfect time to reread anything because yeah, I think I agree with that kind of, that there's a level of comfort and familiarity that I want to get back into. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's so easy to just know exactly what's going to happen, but also know that I'm going to still feel the same feels. And yes. It's just, yeah, I think I'm going to go and dive into a lot more Sarah Dessen because... Yeah, there you go. Yes. That's just, like, pure yeah. nostalgia, but mm-hmm. in such a, like, beautiful and, like, teen angst kind of way. But, yeah, I feel like it, I think it's going to be hard to dive into something entirely new, but mm-hmm. with romance, for sure, I think there's always some kind of formula that I will always appreciate because I love Absolutely. knowing that something, you know, good is going to happen out of this and there's going to be banter and it's going to be steamy and it's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, I I don't necessarily need books to pull at my heartstrings right now, but yeah, everything else in the world is pulling at your heartstrings. (laughs) Yeah. I just want to, I want to laugh. I want some, I want a fictional character to flirt with me and I want to be okay with that. (laughs) Totally. I am 100% there. I think like one of the things about a period of time like now, and it's true, any time in your life, but it's like extra true now is just that there are no shoulds, you know, it's like this idea of like, you should be more productive. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, it doesn't exist. There's no should you should be reading the books on your TBR. No, I reject that. There is no should, you know, like you should be doing the only, whatever brings you joy and makes the day a little bit easier to get through romance whether it's rereading things maybe the thing that like really makes you feel good is getting through your your tbr or right. reading you know instead you're pivoting to nonfiction or you know whatever it is it's just like listen to whatever your soul is aching for right now and just give it to your soul yeah yeah i think that would definitely relieve a lot of people's own personal kind of stressors I think uh, we end up putting a lot of pressure on ourselves to do something that we've always been wanting to do. Like someone out there is trying to learn the guitar right now and you don't need to. Yeah. If no. you don't want to, you can put that bad boy down. You can, I you mean, can do anything else. <laughs> truly, if all I do during this pandemic is just get through it and gain 10 pounds, fine. <laughs> <laughs> like That's success. There, yeah, right. Exactly. Like there is no, like all you have to do is just get through it. Which it can be really difficult, I think. For for me, I'm so type A and I'm so neurotic and I'm like, this needs to be done and this needs to be done and I'm going to stay on target with this and this is my deadline and that's like how I live my life. And I just have to let that go. I, I yeah. 
have to let it go. And by letting it go, I am much happier. Like earlier today, or no, it was last night, because every moment bleeds into another. I cannot tell I was gonna say, every everything day or learn. night or, you know, whatever. It, this could have happened a week ago. I have no idea. But um, my husband was like, well, another day down. And he was like making a joke. But like, honestly, like that's where we're at, you know? Yeah. And that's that okay. That is exactly where we're at. Yeah. Did that you find so like moments of joy today? Did you find a way to do something that made you happy or made your soul feel free or whatever it is? Like that's, you know, like, are you taking good care of the people around you? Are you keeping other people safe? Or, you know, it's like, right. that's, that's, that's where we're at in terms of like things to accomplish in the day. Yeah. I will I think- not be learning an instrument is what I'm saying. <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah, I think uh, my personal life to-do list re- that's sitting right next to my work to-do list just, like, includes looking outside, maybe standing yes. outside. Yeah. And maybe changing from one pajama set to another. Like, they're just... Love I'm it. going for bare minimum here. Yes. And that should be enough. <laughs> yes. So yeah. it's... And, and like, also, water. Drink water, guys. Yes. If you're listening to me right now, you should drink water. And, like, celebrate the bare minimum, right? Because right. it's, like, when... When else are we really allowed to ask of ourselves, like, the the barest minimum? I am right. wearing one set of sweatpants during the day, and sometime around 7 p.m., I change into another set of sweatpants <laughs> per night. And, like, that's my look, and it may just be my look for as long as this takes, and there's some right. joy in that. Yeah. I mean, routine. I'm not wearing a single shirt with a button if I can help it. <laughs> I'm throwing away shirts with buttons after this. <laughs> I am only buying hoodies, even if it's hot. Like, I just want to be as comfortable and as, like, I want to be loungy. I'm thinking yes. forever. For, like, from here on out, I'm going to lounge. But yeah. I'm going to have to. We'll see. Yeah, I'll, adjust. Could, I'll adjust for seasons. <laughs> also, like, I just want to be super clear that, yes, right now I'm in sweatpants that doesn't mean that it can't devolve. Like I might <laughs> never get out of pajamas. I might adopt a robe vibe and like just stick with that full time. Like it's, we don't know where this is going. I could, right. I could end up in a place where I can't actually leave the house <laughs> because of what I look like. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just seeing where life takes me. Yeah. Yeah, I think that at some, I just want to be able to get out of this without having given myself a haircut. I had the horrifying thought yesterday where I was looking in the mirror and I was like, what if I just cut all my hair off myself? <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to deal with it. I don't yeah. want to brush it. Like when I had really short hair, I never had to do anything. I just right. washed it every few days and then just went on my way. And I'm like, maybe I should just give myself that haircut I had in my 20s. Uh, but oh, that's wow. a false premise. That's not going to happen. If if <laughs> I show up on Instagram being like, hey, guys, cut my hair, it's a serious cry for help. Honestly, but it's also a very pandemic thing to do right now. I think totally. I've seen way too many people being like, you know what I did? I got bangs again. And I'm like, well, yeah. that checks out. But, you know, <laughs> that's just, yeah. that's a that's a Thursday in this pandemic. And I get it. But I just, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I want to get there. We're going to have a lot of people with pandemic bangs. Yes. It's going to be, I mean, hairdressers everywhere are shaking, but they're (laughs) just going to have, they're going to have to deal with it. Oh man. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we covered a majority of uh, the bookish things that we should have covered. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think what's important is that we talked a lot about sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want a sweatpants sponsorship after this. Um, yes. Wait, we can but probably also, figure that out. I need as many sweatpants recommendations as possible. Like, you can oh, never definitely. have enough. So I will, I've said it once and I'll say it again. If anyone has a pair of sweatpants that they love and they think I will love them, they should find me and DM me somewhere and tell me about them because <laughs> I just want to add to this collection. Yeah. No, I will definitely link you to some. Because I think all I've been doing now is looking up loungewear and online shopping. I should not be doing this. But. I know. Me neither. But it's not much to do, you know? <laughs> Truly not much to do. I think I'll, maybe I'll head to the living room soon. I don't know. I mean, Anything's, bold choice. <laughs> anything goes now. But <laughs> yeah. No, this has been great. Thank you so much for hanging out. Talking oh, about writing. Thank you. Talking about books. Talking about romance. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. It was a, a a nice break from 
um, playing board <laughs> games with a three and a half year old. Oh God, I'm so jealous. Please FaceTime me in next time. I want to play. I should. I should. Honestly, You'll see how I'm good in. of a job my daughter is doing with um, losing and uh, not always getting a turn. Uh, that's what I'm trying wow. to teach her right now. And honestly, she's doing a pretty good job. She just like crosses her arms and she goes, I'm frustrated. But like <laughs> oh, at three and a half, I'm like pretty impressed with her. That is amazing. She's really learning like all of the life skills now <laughs> within these Honestly. next weeks. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so curious what this generation of kids is going to like grow up to be be like because they're all going through this and it's going oh. to manifest in really interesting ways. Yeah, I think everyone's just going to end up saying like it could be worse. We could be yeah. stuck at home. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> That's yes. amazing. Well, thank you so much, Taylor, for hanging out. Um, Guys, be sure to read Daisy Jones and the Six and everything that Taylor has ever written. She is amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Books Connect Us. For more great book recommendations and information about your favorite authors, feel free to follow Penguin Random House on social media or visit penguinrandomhouse.com. And if you've enjoyed what you've heard, go ahead and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it helps more listeners to find our show. This podcast is produced by Pat Stango and edited by Clayton Gumbert. I've been Erin Leaf, and until next time, this has been Books Connect Us.